please welcome Shantanu Narayan. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Summit 2024. Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to see so many of you here in Las Vegas with us and thousands more that are tuning in online. Thank you again for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's really incredible to reflect on the year since we last came together. What a transformational year it has been for technology. I'm a geek for devices, and when you think about new devices for immersive media like the Vision Pro that captured the public's imagination, you think about space and what's happening with astronomy breakthroughs with the James Webb Telescope that's reshaping our real understanding of deep space. The incredible advances that we've all made in computing, enabling users to accomplish things that we could only imagine. When you think about what NVIDIA has done with the NIM generative AI microservices that enable businesses to create and deploy custom applications, or what Qualcomm has done when they debuted their new Snapdragon X Elite processor for PCs to enable this explosive demand that we all have for power-intensive tasks. But clearly, the entire imagination of the community was captured by what's happened with predictive AI, chat GPT, and the entire era of generative as well as no-code AI. As we started our own generative AI work, it was clear that understanding the state of the art of other large language models, or LLMs, was really important in how we built our own. The result was Adobe Firefly. It's a family of creative generative AI models trained purely on licensed and public domain content so that we can offer customers a commercially safe solution that doesn't infringe on any third-party intellectual property rights. And we're really pleased with how the market has responded. When we think about the magic and value of AI, we know that it actually comes only from the seamless integration into the workflows that all of you as customers already know and love. So we're integrating Firefly across our Creative Cloud, Document Cloud, as well as our Experience Cloud applications. And we've been thrilled to see the customer adoption and excitement with over 6.5 billion generations since our launch. As we saw the power of Firefly transform our own content creation, production, and the variations that we are doing, we've been focused on trying to figure out how we can enable enterprise customers to embed as well as extend our technologies into your own creative production and marketing workflows. We recently introduced Firefly Services, and what Firefly Services enables you to do is create your own custom models, as well as ensure that we can embed this functionality through application programming interfaces or APIs into your own media placement, social, as well as web creation processes. We've really leaned into the creativity for all mission that we have and delivered Adobe Express for enterprises as well as a new Express mobile application that brings the magic and power of Firefly directly into mobile workflows so we can empower everybody from a K through 12 student to any marketer to quickly design and turn your ideas into content, modify assets, as well as create standout designs. With so much of the world's information embedded in PDF, we were delighted to launch the beta of AI Assistant for Acrobat and Reader. And this combines the power of generative AI with our unique understanding of the PDF format so that we can transform the way people interact with as well as extract additional value from their most important documents. And today, AI Assistant can instantly generate a summary, provide you insights from long documents, answer questions as you have a conversational interface with PDF, and provide an on-ramp for generating things like emails, reports, as well as presentations. Every year, one of the pleasures that I have is to immerse myself in a customer problem and brainstorm how technology can be brought to bear 
to help solve it. And this year, using our own marketing operations as a proxy, I wanted to understand how we really conceive, create, and deliver campaigns for events like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I loved engaging with our marketing teams, the products, the engineering and design teams to develop as they developed Adobe Gen Studio so that we could empower marketers to quickly plan, create, store, deliver, and measure all marketing content. And I can tell you that I have even more respect and admiration for the leadership role that all of you as marketers play in organizations all around the world to engage with your customers. But all this innovation, responsible innovation, cannot be an afterthought to all these advancements that we make. And it's why Adobe is collaborating with customers, partners, as well as our community members to develop broad industry standards that make sure that we can have impact across the entire digital ecosystem. We're working to combat misinformation by advocating for widespread adoption of what we call content credentials as an industry standard for establishing trust in all the digital content that's being created. And we're thrilled to be partnering with other generative AI partners, including IBM, Google, NVIDIA, OpenAI, as well as Microsoft. While the world's been captivated over the last year by generative AI, the reality is that every disruptive technology and every era of technology, from the PC, web, and mobile, cloud computing, builds on the platforms of the past. PCs brought computing power to individuals and revolutionized productivity. The web browser connected the world, enabling ubiquitous access to communications, research, as well as commerce. Mobile put computing in our pockets, ensuring that we didn't have to be tethered to our workstations so that we had power. And the cloud enabled us to have all this data in one place so we could harness it in even more powerful ways. And today, when you think about the deep learning AI systems, they're taking advantage of this exponential growth in computing to provide even more insight and to run on cloud infra infrastructure that generates entirely new content. This aggregate effect has been exponential for customers, enabling the generative AI revolution. And with every era, Adobe has tried to invest to transform each of the experiences that you can deliver across the entire customer's end-to-end -end journey with your brands. For Adobe, the journey to deliver CXM started in 2009 with this vision that we had, that we could combine the art and science of marketing by creating a single marketing stack spanning content, data, and journeys. We combined our creative and digital media applications with cloud-based web analytics to help users imagine as well as optimize all your ideas. And over the years, we've continued to expand and deliver on that vision by connecting all the dots across the customer experience value chain. And we believe that CXM will again be transformed in the era of artificial intelligence. But what's constant is that content, data, and journeys will remain, I believe, at the core of how you engage with customers. One of the greatest opportunities we now have with AI is to actually personalize that digital experience to the exact individual rather than the segment or the cohort that we're engaged with. AI will empower companies to look more broadly at partnerships, to link supply chains, and identify new values so that it surprises as well as builds loyalty across a set of brands. And AI will enable us to automate and scale resource-intensive processes to drive significant efficiencies. It will raise the bar on establishing and maintaining trust that is so near and dear to all of us. But at the end of the day, AI will empower all businesses to rethink the customer engagement platforms that have vexed us for decades and to tackle them in more efficient ways. Our approach to generative AI is built on more than a decade of experience integrating AI into our products. And to us, it's about innovating across this framework of data, models, and applications. 
Because AI is only as good as the data on which it's trained. And so our rich data draws upon the investments as well as the expertise across creativity, documents, and customer experience management. We're building high quality foundation models in the categories where we have deep domain expertise and partnering strategically with best in class models to address a range of customer use cases which are strengthened with our intellectual property and ensure that they have the privacy and governance protocols. But the exponential value of this AI will come from how successfully we can integrate it into our daily tasks and workflows. And by integrating AI, as you will hear throughout the entire presentation across our industry-leading portfolio, we're accelerating ideation, exploration, insights, and end-to-end -end production, as well as delivery of all of these productivity gains every single day. And our ecosystem approach ensures that you have great choices to suit your specific AI use cases and the confidence to move from generative AI experimentation to actual value realization. It's clear when we take a step back that tech advances are fundamentally changing consumer expectations for each one of us. Today, technology enables us to predict consumer preferences and offer tailored recommendations. But tomorrow, AI-driven comprehension and agents will enable us to offer solutions that anticipate customer needs even before they can articulate them. Five years ago, we had a vision to create the next generation customer data platform to be a fundamental data infrastructure for all enterprise engagement. We believe this would enable us to seamlessly integrate all our products, accelerate customer implementation, and deliver real savings and scalability. And the Adobe Real-Time Customer Data Platform brings together all these disparate sources of customer data, first party, third party, behavioral, transactional, commerce, across all channels into a single unified profile. It's the fundamental infrastructure we believe that you need to deliver services in real time that customers expect. And I think it's a critical link to the next generation digital experience. Now that you have these hundreds of millions or billions of profiles, you have to create content tailored for every single individual. And Adobe Firefly integrations across our entire creative applications, as well as Express, will help you accelerate this ideation and creation, all while maintaining the creative quality that is so critical to you. Every marketer and agency that I talk to talks about the challenge of finding and reusing creative assets. And so much like the customer data platform brings together customer profiles, we believe that asset management is critical to bring together all the assets and content across your entire enterprise. And by integrating artificial intelligence into the customer experience assets product, we're helping you automatically create metadata down to the last attribute level so you can speed up asset discovery as well as empower you to accelerate delivery. The final bit of magic will enable you through the Adobe Journey Optimizer to deliver that right content to the right customer on the right channel at the right moment. And AI will supercharge all this decision making with real-time insights on the best channels, times, and assets to activate you to maximize your performance. But all of this in an enterprise has also needs to be done so that you can have these orchestration across multiple teams and collaborators. And so we have both work front and frame that enable you to streamline the important aspects of all of this data production so that you can reduce churn and deliver the campaign assets on time and on budget. And last but certainly not least, understanding after all of this content has been deployed, how it performed all the way down to the atomic level of an asset informs how you can improve it so that it's a virtuous cycle. And this is where Adobe is bringing together image level data with customer and journey insights to make this all happen.
With AI, we're able to optimize the entire content to activation process, empower teams to work in real time, and reduce what was once weeks or months long ideation into a matter of mere minutes. And we're excited to share the innovations we're bringing in the market to help you do all of this. You know, Adobe's mission to change the world through digital experiences, we believe is more relevant than ever before. With AI, we're able to deliver unprecedented personalization to every digital experience at an awesome scale. And to empower every one of you, everywhere, to imagine, create, and deliver that digital experience. We see an incredible opportunity to help you redefine creativity, productivity, and customer experiences. But thank you so much for joining us at Summit. I look forward to the conversations. And now let me introduce Anil Chakravarti, who is the president of our digital experience and the host of this show, to talk a lot more about how we can help you accelerate your success in the age of AI. Thank you. Shantanu. Hello, everybody. It's awesome to be here with you at Summit. We are so excited to connect in person with our customers, our partners, our entire community, and for everyone participating online, thank you for joining us. This is really an incredible global community. Your work really inspires us. I mean, look at the terrific examples we just saw in the video, representing the best in marketing and customer experience over the past year. Many of the people that power these brands are with us today. And it just touches the surface of the amazing work being done around the world and across industries today by all of you. Truly impressive, thank you. Now, Adobe Experience Cloud is the most comprehensive portfolio in the industry, making us the global number one leader in digital experience platforms. Our primary focus is innovation. We're delivering best-in-class integrated apps for digital marketing and customer experience management across three key categories. Content, commerce, and workflows, which includes Adobe Experience Manager, commerce, Workfront, data insights and audiences, which includes analytics, mix modeler, and customer journeys, which includes well-known apps like Campaign, Marketo, Target. Five years ago, as Shantanu mentioned, we launched the Adobe Experience platform with the goal of creating a unified customer profile and delivering real-time experiences through a broad portfolio of applications. Now, we have made it easier for you to deploy the apps you need for your business and to adapt to changes in your business through a unified purchasing model that allows for flexible use of those apps across our portfolio. We built three native apps on our platform. Real-time customer data platform, real-time CDP, customer journey analytics, and Journey Optimizer. And together, we have seen great success scaling our platform. Today, our platform typically delivers less than 100 milliseconds response time and processes about 17 trillion first-party segment evaluations and 5 billion edge interactions every day. We built our platform to be open and trusted, and we have over 500 experience platform partner integrations now. Let me give you an example. Last month's Super Bowl. It's a great example of the state of the art when it comes to customer experience management done at massive scale. I know many of you rely on us to create and deliver the digital experiences 
that make your brand stand out during the Super Bowl. So let me give you a few stats that tell the story. Adobe Analytics, for example, processed 4.1 billion server hits with a peak of nearly 500 million per hour, over 80% compared to last year. We delivered 10 and a half million concurrent media streams, 1.8 billion page views, and 2.8 billion multimedia experiences, including dynamic images and video. And Journey Optimizer and Campaign delivered 998 million emails just in February. And that was just all around the Super Bowl. When you look at Adobe ourselves, we run one of the largest digital businesses in the world with Adobe.com, and we run it on Experience Cloud. Today, Adobe.com supports 94 country sites and serves 4.5 billion page views each quarter. And Shantanu talked about profiles. We have 1.8 billion customer and prof prospect profiles just within Adobe. So to scale our digital business, we developed our data-driven operating model, DDOM. Across Adobe, DDOM provides common key performance indicators, showing how our customers discover, try, buy, use, and renew our products. It shows us in real time what's working as anticipated and what is not working, and if it's not working, how to identify the root cause and how we can go about fixing it. To implement DDOM, we needed to have a single view of our customers across all our channels of every interaction and transaction. We needed to have unified profiles with each customer's history, context, sentiment, so that we could recommend actions and deliver offers based on all of that. And to do all of that, we needed a common data platform to connect our experience cloud apps and to build more precise segments and deliver personalized experiences across any device or channel that our customers were coming through. That was one of the key reasons we invested in the Adobe Experience platform five years ago. Now, we are the number one global leader in digital experience platform, and our goal is to enable you to deliver this kind of personalization at scale to your customers. So when you look at the expectation of what counts as personalization at scale, it's evolving quickly in the age of generative AI. With Gen AI, as Shantanu was talking about, customers have the ability and the expectation to have an informed, real-time, two-way personalized conversation with brands. And you need to be able to change the customer's journey in real time based on that two-way conversation while respecting customers' preferences, their privacy, and achieving your business objectives. Let me give you a couple of examples. Think of a bank, for example, delivering personalization at scale to millions of their customers. Soon we'll have a digital personal banker customized for every household, capable of recommending options, whether it's investments or tax management or mortgage or insurance, while also helping the customers plan their budget and pay their bills. Or in healthcare, a digital trusted advisor that provides health and wellness recommendations while helping make doctor's appointments and identifying new products that have shown results for others like that customer. Or in travel and hospitality, your own personal digital concierge at your beck and call as you plan and experience your next trip. And having all of these experiences up to date in real time across any device or channel that you prefer, whether it's your phone or your watch or while you're driving in your car. That's what that next level of personalization will look like. And when you think of scale, it means being able to deliver this to every customer in real time with millisecond response time so that they don't notice any kind of delay and being able to do that to hundreds of millions of consumers or if you're a B2B business, tens of thousands of B2B customers around the world. That type of personalization at scale will enable you to take customer loyalty and your own brand's differentiation to the next level. But there are a couple of critical challenges that we need to overcome to achieve that kind of true, one-on-one, -on -one, real-time personalization at scale. And there are three areas in which these challenges need to be met. First is around content, which is a major issue because the requirements for content are growing way faster 
than a typical organization's ability and budget to produce quality on-brand content. Content production tends to be slow, with many manual processes, lots of handoffs and rework, and expensive. And virtually every brand goes through this and seems to start all over for the next campaign. Now this is where Gen AI will be transformative and will help you automate and optimize the entire end-to-end -end process, from accelerating creative ideation to enabling teams to find and reuse top-performing assets and automating the creation of on-brand marketing content. Second, customer data. Data silos are pervasive, and data engineering skills are scarce, and even when you have the right expertise, it's hard to know where to find the right high-quality data that you can use while respecting your customers' privacy and preferences. Again, in the age of Gen AI, you'll be able to identify the right customer audiences quickly and do so in a trusted manner, and ultimately automate your data pipelines for personalization at scale, and we'll see this in the data and journeys section later today. The third area is around the journeys. Traditionally, marketing campaigns have been brand initiated. But to get to true one-to-one -one personalization, where you have this real-time conversation with customers, the customer journey needs to evolve in real-time as well, and take the entire context of the customer and your brand objectives into account. Typically, that's not what happens today. Today, in many companies, there's a predefined list of journeys, and customers are shoehorned into one of them based on some predefined segmentation. Gen AI, again, will have a significant impact, helping you confidently create new journeys by explicitly understanding your customer's intent and enabling you to refine existing journeys and create new ones while making sure that you're in line with your business objectives. At Adobe, our focus is making Gen AI work for you in the context of your business and your technology environment. Shantanu talked about the three layers that need to work together seamlessly for Gen AI to be successfully deployed. Each layer, whether it's the data that you use for training, the underlying models, and the apps and interfaces, all need to be trusted and integrated. That isn't happening today in many cases. We actually did a survey recently that said that you know, two thirds of respondents said, while they're experimenting with Gen AI, the majority have not moved beyond the experimentation stage. That's what we want to change. We believe we are in a unique position to help you move Gen AI from a shiny new toy to technology that you can confidently put into production and from which you can get real business value. So during the rest of the keynote, we'll highlight a number of Gen AI innovations to help you produce the right content, to make the best and most efficient use of your customer data, and offer truly personalized one-on-one -on -one journeys, whether it should be to C or B to B. So let's dive deeper into the first of those areas around content. A recent survey, again, that we did found that 90% of organizations are struggling to manage content through the entire end-to-end -end content lifecycle for a variety of reasons. And we can help you here. We have a unique position, as Shantanu outlined, in the world of content from the creative tools used to develop virtually every form of media that we see and interact with every day, to the digital experience platform that delivers those experiences. Each one of you today needs to automate and optimize your end-to-end -end process to plan, create, produce, deliver, and measure all of your content. That is your content supply chain, and that will be a significant competitive advantage to you. To get there, the five building blocks that Shantanu outlined workflow and planning, creation and production, asset management, delivery and activation, reporting and insights. I want to highlight the innovations that we are making at a rapid pace across all of these areas. And as you optimize your content supply chain, we are here to partner with you, both through an integrated set of best-in-class products that work with each of these building blocks, as well as a new Gen AI first offering, which is Gen Studio. So let's start with workflow and planning. Workflow and planning is all about orchestrating and accelerating work across the content supply chain, automating your content workflows and reducing manual content creation, and accelerating the review and approval process so that you can get visibility into the entire life cycle. 
Today, I'm excited to announce a major release in Adobe Workfront, which will provide marketing teams a unified view into all campaigns happening inside your organization. Workfront planning enables marketing teams to plan your campaigns and build your campaign briefs in a dynamic, centralized interface. It automatically connects records from every team, including assets, timelines, project status, and performance metrics. So it becomes a true system of record for your marketing activities. Also, anytime a marketer creates a project in Workfront, a parallel project gets created in Frame.io, which is the place where creatives share media and track feedback. That's the result of new native integration between these applications. So any comments and shared assets will instantly be visible across both Workfront as well as Frame.io. The second key building block is content creation and production. The rate of innovation in this area is truly stunning in the age of Gen AI. So there's a ton of things to discuss. So for that, I'd like to welcome Adobe's president of the digital media business, David Wadwani, to the stage. David? Thank you, Anil. Hello, everyone. Hello. That's right, a little creative energy in the room, please. I hope you guys are as excited as I am for the next couple days. Uh, what I wanted to start by talking about is the fact that we live uh, at a time where content and design and creativity has never been more important, where content is literally fueling the global economy, where digital content consumption is absolutely exploding. We're living in a world now where every business needs to have a compelling digital presence. And your ability to personalize your content and your, uh, for your audiences gives you a competitive advantage, a way of authentically connecting with your customers. And that's why we introduced Fire, Firefly on this stage a year ago at this event. Now, as Shantanu uh, mentioned, Firefly, for those of you who aren't uh, fully aware, is our family of foundation creative models. They support image generation, vector generation, text effect generation, uh, and even full design generation. Uh, and later this year, it's going to also support audio generation, video generation, and 3D generation. Now our models, yes, I'm very excited about that. Now our models are not only generating amazing quality content, but they're designed to be commercially safe to use. And they are natively integrated into Photoshop and Illustrator and Substance 3D and Express and our Creative Cloud applications. Collectively, as Shatnu mentioned earlier, we have now generated, but thanks to all of you and our community, over six and a half billion images in the first year since we launched. And it's been amazing to watch what all of you have created as a community with Firefly. But in addition to being fun and cool, it's also just good business. Now, beyond their consulting services, IBM uses Firefly to support their own marketing programs, and their results have been absolutely stunning. A 10x increase in creative productivity, a 60% faster time to market with Firefly, and a recent campaign they ran with Firefly had a 26x increase in customer and social engagement. Now, what IBM has done is really show the power of creating stunning content at scale. And so today, we're excited to take another huge step forward with Firefly. We're going to introduce a solution that's designed to help you realize the promise of personalization at scale by delivering the right creative content to the right audience at exactly the right time. Now, historically, there's been a problem with this. You need a lot of content to be able to do what I just said. You need it to be fresh because content efficacy on social drops a week after you introduce that content. You need a ton of variants because a single hero asset turns into thousands of variations to personalize across products and geos and languages and demographics. And you need it to be cost effective because modern budgets are under a lot of pressure. 
And that's why I'm thrilled today to be announcing the next major milestone for Firefly, which is Firefly Custom Models and Firefly Services. Now, 2023, and I think you'll all agree with me on this. I think you'll all agree that 2023 was a, a year of fun and experimentation with Gen AI. But we need 2024 to be the year we bring generative AI out of the playground and into production. And that's really what we're going to be sharing with you over the next few minutes here. Let's start with custom models. We realize that your content is your intellectual property. Custom models empower your design teams to train your own models on your own IP, your products, your styles, your campaigns. You own the models. Your data stays private and secure. A great example of this is what Coca-Cola did. They've been an early partner of ours working with custom models for a few months. They used Photoshop to create the content you see on the left. They trained a Firefly custom model with that content, and now they can generate the images you see on the right with Firefly. They can create now fresh, on-brand content much more quickly with Firefly custom models. And that's a huge change in terms of their velocity and their ability to create content at scale for personalization. Now, custom models are going to be accessible inside our Creative Cloud applications and inside Adobe Express. So your creative teams and marketers can go from idea to campaign in record time. The second big announcement today is Firefly Services. In my mind, this is going to be the biggest change to content creation in decades, and it's going to transform how enterprises work. Firefly services provide automation APIs for generating content, like what you just saw, using Firefly APIs. But it goes beyond that. It lets you actually have API access to edit and assemble content using decades of innovation from Photoshop and Creative Cloud APIs as well. These set, this broad set of APIs is going to let you generate, process, and assemble thousands of assets in minutes instead of months. And I want to have Wes Hopkins uh, come up on stage to show us Firefly Services in action. But before you welcome Wes, I just wanted to tell you a little story about Wes. Wes is a creative at Adobe. Wes has not had a haircut in seven years. <laughs> But he showed up at Vegas knowing he was going to present to some of the largest enterprises and some of the biggest brands in the world. He went to get a trim, and it went a little bit further than he expected. So <laughs> please welcome Wes and his full commitment to all of you. Wes. Thank you, David. <laughs> Just a trim. Firefly Services gives you the power of Adobe's generative AI capabilities directly in your own custom applications and workflows. Now, in this example, I'm a creative working on a marketing campaign for an energy drink, and this is an example of the type of content that we need to create. Different languages, different products, targeting different segments and different channels, and so on. And now, normally, we would be assembling this one by one in Photoshop. It's highly manual, highly repetitive, and I really wish that I could scale and do more. And now I can with Firefly Services. So I used a no-code automation platform to quickly string together some of the API calls to handle some of the work that I would have to do normally manually as a creative. Now, I chose the no-code approach. But since these are easy to use REST APIs, these could be used in any programming language or environment. Now let me show you what I made. So I've already connected my workflows to my team's collaboration tool of choice, Frame.io. And a colleague has already uploaded some product shots for me. Now, the shots, they look great, but we need to put them on some new backgrounds. So I'm going to need ideas. I'm going to need inspiration at scale. What I'm going to need is the workflow I just made. So I'm going to start my first workflow, ideation at scale. So now, while that's running, I want to show you two more things. First, a custom model. So we pre-trained a custom model to ensure that the images that we are going to generate align with our brand aesthetic. And second, a spreadsheet full of prompts aligned to the segments that we're going to be generating images for. So what our workflow is doing behind the scenes is generating images 
taking our prompts, putting it through the custom model, generating images, and we should see them streaming here, live, into frame. And we don't. It is a live demo. <laughs> so here we are, streaming into frame. And so now my team yeah, can, they can look at the images, they can comment, we can take the ideas out in Photoshop further if we want to refine the ideas a little bit more. Um, so we've got options. And so when used in this fashion, Firefly Services becomes a force multiplier for creativity and inspiration. Yeah, and so that uh, is basically this idea of ideation at scale. Again, what Wes took was some Photoshop content, he combined it with some Firefly prompts and some brand styles that he had generated before and was able to generate hundreds of on-brand assets uh, in a matter of, of seconds. The, this is just the start of the process though, right? So this is, you've now got these assets, you need to assemble these assets uh, into ad and social units. So how do you do that? That's right. So the next thing we need to do is take some of these beautiful images and put them into this Photoshop template. So again, what you can see is we have different sizes, different aspect ratios and areas for calls to action. And again, this would normally be an assembly by hand and I can only do a few ideas, but I have another workflow that will be able to help me with this process. So I'll invoke another image live, right? So I will start my make banners ideation. So what's happening now behind the scenes is Firefly Services is taking our key art, generatively expanding it to our new dimensions. Photoshop is then taking the results, plus our translated calls to action, and sending the results now streaming here into frame. So this is being composed in real time. Right, and this is a really, really big deal. We're having a little bit of a, of a demo issue here, but what's happening is all of this content is being generated in the back end. It's coming in uh, directly, and ideation is now creating hundreds of assets behind the scenes. But the key principle here is that while all these assets are being generated, we want to keep the power in the hands of the creative team. So as, these content, as this content comes in, the creative teams can look at it, but what if they see something they want to change? What if they want to do something different with what comes in? Yeah, no problem, because these files are still full fidelity layered Photoshop documents. So a creative can always take them out, make any adjustments that they need, put them back in, and we're on our way. Which brings me, actually, <laughs> which, which does bring me to my next point, which we, is we do need some creative oversight as part of this process. And so if you wouldn't mind taking a look at the iPad here, we have some assets that are ready for your review. So I assume many of you guys do this uh, all the time. I am, uh, you know, as a business owner at Adobe, uh, I'm reviewing more and more content than ever before. Because again, as I mentioned, we are building more content for more personalization than we've ever had before. And so it feels like for ads and campaigns and social, I'm living in frame and work front now. So as I, as I do my approvals, I can look at these things. I can go ahead and, and I can say, I approve this one. I can swipe to the next one. I can make some comments. But again, as a business owner, I get to be in control over everything that is going to go out to our customers. So as I do that, that is then generating and running more back-end code using our APIs, and Wes will walk through what that is doing in the back-end. Perfect, exactly. So what Firefly Services is now doing is taking the approved PSDs, cutting them apart into individual images, giving them proper file names so we'll be able to find them later, attaching campaign metadata, and then sending the assets to AEM assets for delivery. So in a matter of mm, about four minutes, assets delivered. That's awesome. So again, in under five minutes, are we clapping for you or are we clapping for a firefly? Or maybe both. Uh, in under five minutes, uh, we were able to create all of this content that would have taken months to do, and frankly, more importantly, wouldn't have gotten done. Right, because there's only so much you can do manually and we would not have this level of variation uh, ever before. So now that the content is here and it's all stored and, and uh, in finished ad and, and social units, how do we activate it? How do we get it in the hands of marketing teams so that they can actually go and drive the business with it? Easy, with our social marketing team is using Express and we're gonna refresh. And they're using Express to get mar content into market. And now we have a native, native integration with AEM assets, allowing our marketing team basically has a full um, avalanche of content that they can now use to keep the content in socials fresh 
for the next several weeks. And that's not all. We're just scratching the surface. I've only showed you one way that we can use um, Firefly Services APIs to accelerate content production, but as these are easy to use REST APIs, they can be done in any programming language. Also, every, ca every capability you just saw is live and available today. Thank you, Wes. So what Wes just showed, and to just summarize a little bit about what we've talked about this morning, uh, everything you saw, Firefly is the most complete set of creative models. Images, vectors, text effects, designs with audio, video, and 3D coming later this year. We also showed that you can now securely create custom models of your products, your styles, and your campaigns. And all of this, including the custom models, are accessible within Creative Cloud applications for your studio teams. And all of this, including custom models, will be accessible within Adobe Express for enterprises for your marketing teams. And last but certainly not least, you'll be able to access all of this through Firefly service APIs. So your teams can now scale personalized content creation beyond what's possible manually. It's a huge shift in terms of how you can control and drive all of this. Now, earlier today, I showed you a little bit about what IBM and Coca-Cola has done and some case studies around what they did with Firefly services. But we've also been using Firefly services and custom models at Adobe. And our results have been equally incredible. Time to produce social content has now gone down by 80%. The number of images produced across campaigns and across channels has gone up by 5x. And Firefly-powered uh, campaigns are seeing a 60% increase in engagement. Now, Heather Freeland, our chief brand officer, is going to be hosting a strategy session tomorrow where she's going to share all of this at 1, 1 p.m. and do a double click on what we've done. So if you're interested in learning more, please go check out that session. Now, I'm almost done. My time here is uh, almost done. But I would like to share one more thing with you before I go. We've always said that we want Firefly to provide more creative control than any other model in the industry. And two features, I think, that show this off and what it means for you, your creative teams, and marketers are style reference and structure reference, which we just announced and released this morning for the very first time. And the combination of these are going to blow your mind. For example, simply upload an image as a style reference on the Firefly web app or through the APIs, and generate images that capture the style, the lighting, the color, and the mood of that reference image. And now, with today's launch of Structure Match, simply upload an image as a structure reference, and Firefly web app is going to generate images that match the structure and the composition of that reference image. Now, we knew this was going to be cool. We knew this was going to give creative teams a lot of expression. But we got this in the hands of our own creative artists internally. And Anna McNaught, one of our resident artists, did this with it. Check it out. She uploaded one of her ideation sketches as a structure reference, typed in a prompt describing the mood she was looking for, and check out the images that Firefly generated. This took only seconds for her to play. Then she uploaded some of her finished work as style references. And Firefly generated these beautiful images that honored her structure and the sketch of her unique style. And again, this took just seconds. So to net all of this out, and thank you, Anna, for this work. I mean, it's, it's amazing what creatives are able to do with this. So to net everything out this morning, Firefly models generate amazing quality content and give you incredible levels of control. Firefly custom models let you safely train your products, your styles, and your brands. And Firefly services empower you to create more personalized content than ever before so your creative and marketing teams can run campaigns with more agility at an unprecedented level of personalization. So thank you for your time this morning. Have a great summit, and back to Anil. Thank you, David. Wasn't that an exciting innovation? Really stunning imagery there.
Firefly services, as you saw, are truly transformational. And with Gen AI, we are natively integrating our apps across the creative cloud and the experience cloud. So we've talked about workflow and planning, and David just talked about content creation and production. Let's dive into the other three key building blocks of the content supply chain, where we're innovating across those three as well. Asset management. Asset management is key for content reuse and providing marketers the agility to create on-brand content and reuse that content. Now, Adobe Experience Manager Assets is where many of you already store your images, icons, illustrations, videos, and other assets. And today, I'm excited to announce Content Hub, a new capability in the Experience Manager Assets to enable anyone on the marketing team to easily search, find, and share assets so that you can reuse valuable brand-approved marketing content, huge time and money saver. Content Hub, by the way, is what we are using in our own marketing organization. David shared with you some of the Black Friday content. We are using the Content Hub to organize all of the assets for our own campaigns across Adobe. The fourth key area is around delivery and activation making sure that all this great content, this stunning content that you produce, is delivered to customers through their preferred channels at the right time. As an example, when you think of the web, Adobe Experience Manager Sites is the longtime leader here in delivering awesome web experiences. And today, I'm pleased, pleased to share a new release of Adobe Experience Manager Sites, reimagined with Generative AI. Now, new variant generation capabilities will help you take a single marketing asset and create virtually endless variations of web copy and images that speak to different audiences, industries, job roles, age groups, and more. We've also dramatically improved load times and responsiveness to help you boost SEO rankings, traffic, conversions with a set of Adobe developed performance tools. And we've simplified and accelerated the authoring process so that you can create and edit web pages in a democratized fashion through the productivity tools that your team already uses, like Microsoft Word or Google Docs. And the last key building block, no content supply chain is complete without closing the feedback loop. You need to know what's being used, what's working well or not working, and why. Here, we've launched Adobe Content Analytics, which is built natively on the Experience platform. I'm excited to share new analytics and insights capabilities that help you understand the performance of any of your content, including AI-generated content, and do that at a granular level for things like colors, objects, styles, sentiment, across your experiences, campaigns, channels, and audiences. And using AI, Content analytics helps you analyze content performance across hundreds of variants from a single hero asset. So if we put all of that together, Adobe is the company to work with for your content supply chain. With our expertise across creativity and marketing, we're driving tremendous innovation across all of our current products that underpin the content supply chain process. But we're going further than that. For marketing teams that are driving workflows in critical areas, whether it's paid media ads, or email, or social, we are delivering a new end-to-end -end app to help you accelerate the entire process. And that is Adobe Gen Studio. Gen Studio is a Gen AI first app that enables marketing teams to accelerate your on-brand content, all the way from discovery and ideation, through creation, production, as well as activation and measurement. No better way to introduce it to you than for you to see it in action. So for that, I'm excited to welcome Anne Rich to the stage. Anne, over to you. Thanks, Anil. I am so excited to walk you through Adobe Gen Studio. Before I get started, I wanted to say a big thank you to Coca-Cola for the use of their brand. While the exact data and scenario is fictional, the workflow and marketing experience is very real. Let's check it out. Adobe Gen Studio brings together everything marketers need in one place by having creation, content, campaigns, activation, and insights 
Together, marketers can create and scale on-brand enterprise-ready content in seconds. Powering all of these amazing actions are the rich and deep products across Adobe, including the content supply chain applications like Workfront and Adobe Experience Manager, creative applications like Adobe Photoshop and Express, and of course, generative AI powered by Firefly. For today, I am going to be a marketer at Coca-Cola working on this Coca-Cola creations campaign focused on the dream world product line. And I am so excited. Everything I need is all in one place. And this single source of truth is connected to Adobe Workfront, ensuring that there's continuity and consistency across the organization. Of course, brand is essential for campaigns. All of the brand elements are here, including logos, colors, tone of voice, and guidelines. But this brand isn't just here. It's across all of Adobe, meaning that I can use it in other applications like Adobe Express. As you've heard, finding and reusing assets can be challenging. I have all of my assets and powerful metadata search and filtering thanks to Adobe Experience Manager right here. And if I needed to make a change to one of these, I could do that right here through embedded Adobe Express. But at the end of the day, for me as a marketer, it is all about performance. And we have three levels of insights. There's full experience level insights. There's asset level insights and then attribute level insights. And the attributes help me to target my generations to exactly what's resonating with my customers. If I needed to do deeper analysis, I could do that right here through customer journey analytics. But for right now, let's get back on track. I'm here to get something done, which is to create a DreamWorld Facebook ad. Now, this was taken directly to the creation workflow. I'm here all the time, but for those of you seeing it for the first time, let me walk you through what's here. So this is a complete marketing experience. It has everything I need to complete a Facebook ad. The asset is right here in the template. I have all of the copy header, subheader, call to action. I also have all of the context I need to be able to target my generations exactly how I want to. And I'm so excited. These were brought in automatically through the connection to the task and to the campaign. The brief, brand, personas, product, and channel is all here. The first thing I want to do is generate some new stuff. And I can do that right here. Now, of course, I could use the amazing Firefly Image 2 model. But our company, Coca-Cola, has amazing custom models. And these are powered by Firefly services, and they are trained on our DreamWorld product line, meaning that I always have consistency and on-brand style. This DreamWorld landscapes looks perfect. Now, I need a bottle shot. I can get that right here in Content Hub. Let's add it. And then my prompt. Surreal cloud pom-pom dream world. And I'm bringing in those attributes right here and then generate. These are so fun. I am so excited to see these. They have just the feel I was looking for. Thanks to the custom model. Let's add these two. Amazing. OK, now our team at Coca-Cola, the creative team, uses the Firefly service automation that you saw Wes show earlier. So we have a ton of assets in our content hub, and I'm going to see if there's any I can reuse. So this is everything. That's a little too much. Let's filter it to just my campaign and see what comes up. These two cans look perfect. They're right on style. Let's add them. OK, I have all of my context. I have my visuals. All I need is my copy prompt. Uh, let's see, highlight the power of Coca-Cola to transport you to dreamlike worlds. And let's go. Amazing, four complete 
Facebook ads right here, ready to go. They're all set. I know they're in alignment with our brand because of the brand check. If I needed to make a change to any of these, I could do that right here through Edit in Adobe Express or Photoshop. Now, looking at them a little more closely, I am not sure about this line. Let's change it from dream world to colorful world. Yeah. No, I'm out of alignment with my brand, and I'm notified right away and can get back on alignment right here through the powerful edits that are given. <laughs> Amazing. That's perfect. Back on brand. From Gen Studio, I can send for approval, export for activation, or save for reuse across my entire organization. Now, that was super powerful and easy. But as a marketer, I'm going to come back here all the time to see how my creations are performing. And I can do that right here through the Insights tab. Now, I could, of course, do all of the analysis. But for right now, I'm just interested in high performers. And my ad is performing really well. It actually looks like it's doing the best. Let's check it out. OK, the funnel looks good. The assets look good. The attributes look like they're doing really well. I could do a lot of things. But for right now, I just want to create some more variants. And I can do that right here. LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, and email, and generate. This is a dream come true. I went from one channel to four channels in seconds. If I needed to change an aspect ratio, I could do that right here through Generative Expand. And that's just a taste of Adobe Gen Studio, Adobe's Gen AI first application, bringing together everything marketers need to find, create, store, deploy, and measure marketing content that's enterprise ready in one product. Back to you, Anil. Awesome. Thank you, Anne. Great job. Incredibly powerful and really inspiring to see how a Gen AI first application truly transforms the way marketing teams will scale and accelerate on brand content. We've talked a lot about technology, but it's always great to hear how it's applied, to hear firsthand from a business leader who has delivered transformational innovations in a critical, demanding industry. Today, we are fortunate to have with us an inspiring leader who has implemented the content supply chain at scale in a highly regulated industry, biopharmaceuticals. Lydia Fonseca is the Chief Digital and Technology Officer and Executive Vice President of Pfizer, where she is responsible for enterprise-wide digital data and technology strategy and solutions to support Pfizer's purpose of delivering breakthroughs that change patients' lives. Please join me in welcoming Lydia Fonseca to the stage. Tonight, I'm gonna have myself a real good time. I feel alive. Good morning, everyone. For decades, cancer has been one of the most feared words any of us will ever hear. It is no surprise that cancer has been called the emperor of all maladies. According to the World Health Organization, about one in five people on Earth develop cancer in their lifetime. And in 2024, for the first time, New cases of cancer in the U.S. will exceed 2 million. 
This is why Pfizer is accelerating our battle against this devastating disease with our acquisition of Seagen, a biotech focused on cancer therapies. We plan to bring innovative treatments for cancer with more than 25 potential regulatory approvals in the next five years, aiming to double the number of patients treated by our medicines by 2030, to bring hope to cancer patients everywhere. We know that for patients and their loved ones battling cancer, every moment counts and time is life. But in addition to cancer, we continue to fight other conditions like migraine, respiratory illnesses, antimicrobial resistance, and obesity that impact millions of people in the world. In fact, in 2022, we set an ambitious goal of changing one billion lives every year by 2027, not just in a pandemic year. I am proud to share that Pfizer treated 618 million people around the world with our medicines and vaccines in 2023. And 2023 was also a record-breaking year for F FDA approvals for Pfizer, with nine new molecular entity approvals, such as Sapsprit, nasal spray for migraine, Abrisvo to protect older adults from RSV, and Alrexview to address multiple myeloma, and many more approvals for new indications in existing products. As you can imagine, it is critical that we create clear, relevant, and timely content about these breakthroughs for patients and physicians, putting information at their fingertips to inform treatment decisions. At Pfizer, we believe that when science wins, patients win. You see, our success rests not only on our unwavering commitment to science, but on also on building trust. I like to say that healthcare is a team sport, and Adobe is a key partner in transforming our marketing and how we create content. So let's delve into what we have been doing together. You might be surprised by the amount of content that Pfizer generates. We develop materials to educate physicians, patients, and their families at every stage of their health journey, from disease prevention, screening, treatment, and post-treatment options. We do this for hundreds of medicines across many diseases and more than 140 markets. We communicate in different languages across multiple channels, including websites, emails, marketing campaigns, apps, and digital health companions. Historically, we created and managed content with many external agencies and did not have a central repository to share or reuse materials in an efficient way. We selected Adobe as our strategic partner because of their innovative marketing and content products and capabilities that can be deployed at scale. We set an ambitious goal to create five times more content with half the effort at a lower cost by reinventing our content supply chain. The time is now. With over a dozen branded websites for new medicines planned for 2024, as well as integrated marketing campaigns across online and offline media. In just six months, we scaled our new content creation process to 3,800 marketers and 80 of our markets. And Adobe Enterprise deployment at this speed and scale had not been done before. Adobe Experience Manager is now serves as our single repository, giving us visibility across all of our valuable content, while Workfront allows us to collaborate with our creative agencies to track progress down to individual pieces of content. Our marketers can now, on their own, create marketing campaigns and materials for patients and physicians faster than ever. We also deployed automation and AI to simplify how we review and approve content, accelerating our medical and legal review cycle time by 50%, all of which will help Pfizer marketers and our creative partners create content 75% faster. And speed is critical. 
Because the sooner patients understand their options and start on therapy, the faster they can be on the path to wellness. For those, you know, we also leverage generative AI to create better quality, more personalized messaging for those most critical conversations between doctors and patients and their families. Pfizer is proud to be the first customer to fully scale Adobe's new document-based authoring capabilities that empower our marketers to directly update our brand websites, ensuring our customers can access the latest and greatest information. In fact, this capability helped us create our Outdo Cancer website in under three weeks. We unveiled it as part of our 2024 Super Bowl ad that you saw at the beginning of my talk. This digital experience exceeded all expectations, with more than 1 billion impressions and over 4 million visitors to OutdoCancer.com within a week of the Super Bowl. The ad was ranked number 11 out of the 70-plus ads that ran that day, and we were number two of companies who had a Super Bowl ad for the first time. Not too bad for our rookie Super Bowl ad, right? I like to think that it helped, it helped us to stand out amongst the snacks, the Hollywood power couples, and the Clydesdales. So where do we go from here? To accelerate our bold ambition to outdo cancer and tackle other global diseases, we continue to harness the power of AI, taking it to the next level with generative AI. And these use cases are across every aspect of our business which we anticipate to deliver $750 million to $1 billion in value in the near term. And we're driving three AI bold plays in oncology, manufacturing, and commercial that we anticipate each will deliver $1 billion in value in the longer term. In oncology, generative AI is helping us to identify and validate new targets to improve our scientific success create draft documents to accelerate regulatory data submissions, as you can imagine, very important for us, and generate medical and marketing content. In manufacturing, we can identify the optimal process parameters, or what we call the golden batch, and use generative AI to detect anomalies and recommend actions to our operators in real time, aiming to improve product yield by 10% and reduce cycle time by 25%. In commercial, AI is helping us orchestrate hyper-personalized experiences by creating and delivering tailored content, empowering patients and consumers throughout their entire health journey. And we are super excited that Adobe Firefly is help, helping us create 8,000 illustrations in just four weeks for a consumer product that's launching later this year. Firefly brought a substantial amount of content to life which we quickly iterated based on consumer feedback. The illustrations, combined with rich images, video, and text, create an immersive and engaging experience. Let me close by thanking you, Adobe, for being at the heart of our marketing and content transformation. You're helping us build trust and put valuable information about our life-changing medicines at the fingertips of physicians, patients, and other stakeholders faster than ever before. Together, we can accelerate the next generation of cancer breakthroughs that will help people with cancer live better, longer lives. We're ready to do the impossible, to make the impossible possible again, and outdo cancer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. That was really impressive, inspiring. Thank you. So, and thank to you and the Pfizer team for the amazing work you did during the pandemic, and now everything you're doing in the battle against cancer. Uh, so just wanted to obviously uh, just have a quick conversation on a few things that you mentioned. So, you know, first I was really struck by the scale and magnitude of the work you described with your web properties. And that's something I was not aware of. You mentioned the uh, outdo cancer site as an example. I would love to hear more about what's the impact to your stakeholders and your business uh, of all these. 
happy to. And thank you, Anil and Adobe, for inviting us to be here and, and share a bit of you know, our story and what we've been doing. We care a lot about supporting patients and their, you know, in their health journey with the right resources, from the science to health information to treatment options. And I can tell you that our websites are an essential way that we reach physicians, patients, and caregivers. Um, the Outdo Cancer websites helps us reach a global audience, and I think very importantly, illustrates our commitment to helping cancer patients and their loved ones. Uh, Anil, we've seen an 18-point increase in healthcare professionals associating Pfizer with solving cancer. Hmm. So pretty powerful stuff. Several other web properties are driving value for us. I'll give you a couple of examples. Pfizer Link, um, it makes clinical trials more accessible to patients, helping us recruit trial participants 50% faster than prior ways that we, we've done it in the past. Pfizer Pro is our digital destination for physicians. Obviously, physicians are a very, very key customer for us to access trusted scientific and medical content, as well as services. It is in 69 markets, Anil, and more than 9 million physicians access Pfizer Pro in 2023. And, you know, I will tell you, we are very excited about our new content supply chain because it enables us to quick, quickly translate and publish content to sites like Pfizer Link, Pfizer Pro, and our other brand sites. And that Adobe Experience Manager is really empowering us to maximize the value of our web properties. So as you can see, we're driving broad awareness as well as really driving connection to our purpose with our key stakeholders. Awesome. You touched upon the speed to market, and I think you made a great case. That's how you reach patients faster, and that is, that's what powers the ambitious goals you have of uh, launching so many new therapies. So when you think about the content supply chain, what are your goals moving forward? How do you bring those to? So Pfizer has one of the strongest product pipelines of medicines and vaccines in our history. And we need technology and solutions that can scale as we bring these medicines to the world. We're driving deeper engagement with our stakeholders, and content is at the heart of that transformation. So we have a few goals as follows. Our first goal is flexibility and speed. So marketers can quickly create messaging and campaigns, but also very importantly, revise those based on performance data so that we provide the most relevant personalized content to our audiences in the way that resonates best with them, right? Second, a single global repository annual for content helps us avoid duplication, quickly adapt and reuse materials across teams and translating different languages for all markets and brands. This drives speed, but also lowers cost as well. Finally, shared tools and integrated workflows for content creation also provide our teams with transparency and clarity so that they can collaborate better. Collectively, we anticipate our content supply chain capabilities to contribute to a better customer experience which we're measuring through ambitious goals, Anil, for customer satisfaction, MPS, as well as marketing ROI. Awesome. Generative AI, we've talked a lot about it, and you are obviously in a regulated industry. You've got to be super careful on how you do it. You already talked a little bit in your presentation about Gen AI. What does it take to go from experimentation to true production and business value? The short answer is that we have been deploying generative AI since last year. Um, and like many companies across industries, we're moving fast to grow adoption. We're capturing this opportunity through three tiers of initiatives. Tier one is what we like to call our no regrets moves. So for example, we launch our internal generative AI platform because we're very regulated and we want to protect our assets and our IP. And that enables our colleagues to access large language models so that they can quickly prototype and really implement those use cases, right? We want them to experiment, but we want them to experiment in a safe way. We were also one of the first companies in the world to roll out Microsoft Copilot to boost product, you know, our colleagues' productivity. And, Anil, we went to the cloud in a big way. 80% of our core is in the cloud, which is, a, is very key to operationalizing AI. Tier two is emerging opportunities that can be deployed in one to two years, and I would characterize these as they innovate our processes and they change how work is done. 
In, at Pfizer, in 2023, every executive reporting to the CEO carried a goal to deploy two AI use cases in their areas. These initial use cases, 22 of them, spanned every aspect of our business. One of those use cases is leveraging generative AI to create the first draft of marketing and medical content. And tier three is the transformation of bold place. I spoke about those as well. Those take three to five years to achieve full value. And our AI bold place, as you heard, our oncology, manufacturing, and commercial. Collectively, Anil, all three of these tiers of initiatives, we anticipate will deliver close to $4 billion in value over the next three to five years for Pfizer. Very, very impressive. So, you know, this is something that uh, I think is truly inspiring across all of those. I know the last thing you wanted to just touch upon was the AI skills in the academy that you had, just, yeah, and how you're building these skills. Sure. We do believe that to achieve, you know, the, the promise of AI and generative AI, it is very important that we skill our colleagues, right? They, so we launched an AI academy with offerings to build AI skills and knowledge across the company, right? Because Anil, at the end of the day, for us, we know that patients are waiting and AI will help us deliver on our purpose to bring breakthroughs to patients faster. Awesome, thank you so much, Lydia. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Wonderful presentation, it's great dialogue with you. And thank you for being such a great partner, Adobe. Tools. Appreciate it, thank you. Right. Thanks Bye. very much. Round of applause for Lydia, thank you. So we have talked a lot today about the stunning content that can be produced in the age of AI. We've talked about how great content can only have impact if it's delivered to the right customer at the right, uh, at the right time through the right channels like Lydia talked about in healthcare. Now that kind of personalization at scale requires content, customer data, and journey orchestration, all working in sync and powered by AI. We are driving innovations across customer data and journeys to make that possible. So let's dive deeper into those areas as well. Those are critical areas to support your efforts at personalization. And for that, I'd like to invite Anjul Bamri, Senior Vice President of Adobe Experience Cloud Engineering, to join us today. Anjul, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Anil. Um, great to be here. And like you've been hearing, our North Star at Adobe is to enable brands to deliver one-on-one -on -one personalized experiences in real time so that all of their customers get the right experiences across every touch point. Now, this is conceptually simple, but implementing this can be challenging. Due to several factors, there are technology complexities, there's the fragmented customer profiles, the need to react to customer signals in real time makes this even more daunting, and there's the ever-increasing trust and privacy requirements, not to talk about the growing skills gap. As you heard from Shantanu and Anil five years ago, to help with these challenges, we launched the Adobe Experience Platform. We unified your siloed data across your digital and enterprise sources, built unified customer profiles, and we developed three industry-defining applications that sit on top of this rich data layer. The real-time CDP to construct real-time audiences, Adobe Journey Optimizer to deliver omni-channel experiences. Customer Journey Analytics to help you analyze and measure the impact of these experiences. Now, all of these applications work together in a seamless manner, in a closed loop, with the unified profile at the core. So unified profile is really the brain behind these applications. Now, in addition to these new applications that we built, these unified profiles also power our best-in-class applications like, and they enhance web personalization in Target, 
uh, the enhanced marketing automation in campaign and marketo, and all of this while adhering to enterprise class, governance, trust, and security. And a huge thanks to all of you that because of our partnership, we now have 40 petabytes of customer data in Experience Platform. We process 5 billion edge interactions on a daily basis, delivering experiences in less than 100 milliseconds. We are also performing 17 trillion segment evaluations on a daily basis, leading to delivery of 3 billion offers and 400 billion personalized messages every year. All of this has made Adobe the number one digital experience platform, the undisputed leader in delivering one-on-one -on -one personalization at scale, and we do this across industries. Thank you so much. <laughs> now with all this experience platform innovation, the aspirations that our brands have today are even higher. They expect more from us. They want to reach more customers in less time with higher degree of precision. This means accelerating use cases into production, scaling the audience's journeys and channels, making people in their current roles more efficient, and reducing the dependency on a small set of experts. So what we see that in reality, a data engineer, they want to know what data is needed, which journeys will use it. An audience specialist wants to know which segments are unused and which specific customer traits really lead to conversion. Journey manager needs to understand which journeys will be effective before they go live. And a data analyst may want a quick summary of the performance across hundreds of journey experiments that they are running to choose which ones they should double down on. Now, we are addressing these aspirations by leveraging the power of generative AI and embedding a new set of capabilities right into the Experience Platform applications. I'd like to introduce Adobe Experience Platform AI Assistant. The AI Assistant, yes, that is us. We, we love our AI Assistant. <laughs> you know, it understands your data. It really speaks to your data. You can think of the AI Assistant as your data guru, your analytics maestro maybe even your tech support genius, the simulation savant. So what does it do? It does a lot of things. I'll highlight four points here. One, of course, it can answer a variety of questions all through a natural language conversational interface, from product how-tos to the state of your system. Second, it can automate tedious tasks like your data engineering pipelines, by helping you ingest the right data, create schema, map fields. We know that engineering, uh, data engineering pipelines are pretty complex, so automation of that is, is, I, I, is a big deal. Three, it can simulate outcomes, like journey performance, journey simulation, and audience propensity to convert. Fourth, it can support practitioners to generate the desired audiences and journeys just using simple English language prompts. AI Assistant is embedded natively in the applications that you use, like real-time CDP, journey optimizer, and customer journey analytics. And we've had a number of customers use these capabilities in beta, and they have given us some good feedback. And also, they have helped us really shape uh, uh, the, the, you know, the usefulness and the accuracy of uh, what the AI assistant produces. Now, the feedback from our customers, like uh, you know, one of the banks uh, in the US, their data engineering team, 
The AI assistant helped them save on the effort of understanding the data semantics just through simple conversations with the AI assistant. So they're seeing a boost in their productivity when it comes to all the data ingestion um, cycles uh, that uh, were needed before they, uh, they use the AI assistant. A regional grocery business, they use the AI assistant to troubleshoot their data engineering pipeline without the need to call link support. So, you know, a big boost uh, in their productivity and also anybody now can troubleshoot complex workflows for which otherwise they had dependency on other people. They can unleash new ideas. A large apparel brand in Europe was able to generate many variants of brand conforming content for email and push in seconds. So it's a secure brand safe component that will turbocharge your experience platform usage across your enterprise and will benefit all personas. With the AI Assistant, we are also investing in a radically new way for you to experience our software, where key roles in your organization can focus on their core competencies, use AI-powered features to collaborate, and allow you to interact with our applications in your preferred way of getting your job done. It could be conversational through the AI Assistant, or you could continue to use our guided workflows in the user experience. I guess time for demo now. So let me invite Marissa McKay Tarantino to show the power of AI Assistant in action. Thank you, Anjul. I am thrilled to show you how a marketing team in the travel and hospitality industry would utilize the AI Assistant across their different roles. My marketing team has to launch a brand new campaign to target people who will book travel to our five beautiful new properties so we can try to increase our conversion rate by 10%. And the kicker, my boss told me this needs to launch tomorrow. Now, I'm a journey manager, so typically I have to work with my data engineer, my audience specialist, and my data analyst to get something like this live. But they're all working in Vegas. So it looks like it's just me and AI Assistant to the rescue. I'm gonna show you how AI Assistant empowers me to create both audiences and a journey to meet this quick turnaround without having to bug my teammates. It's available to support me 24 seven and clearly embedded in all of my workflows. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop this window out so all 10,000 of us can see it a little bit better. Instead of using one of these pre-configured prompts, I'll go ahead and type in something custom related to this ask. Show me all of the segments with room bookings in the last 12 months. Now, this is really cool. AI Assistant was able to sift through literally thousands of audience definitions and millions of profiles, understanding the traits I have in Adobe Experience Platform, which is allowing me to understand that these are the eight segments that make sense for my, for my customer journey that I'm about to kick off. But that's still too many for me to really get to the heart of what I'm looking for, so I'm gonna ask AI Assistant to help me finalize this list a little bit further. Which of these segments contain the highest number of people with a propensity to book in the next 30 days for our five newest properties? Okay, now this is interesting. AI Assistant not only maintained the conversation context from earlier, but is also helping me find the three segments that make the most sense based on the context of my ask for location, the 30 days, and the propensity score. And on top of that, it's surfacing the profiles within each of these audiences that make sense and fit the bill. AI Assistant is a pretty good listener, and I like the look of this first segment. It has the most people and the highest propensity to book. Next, I'll head to Adobe Journey Optimizer, where, you guessed it, we'll be utilizing AI Assistant again. Here's this existing likely to book journey that I wanna modify to save a little bit more time. I wanna understand what the ideal time is to send a nudge or a reminder to book for that likely to book audience. So I'll go ahead and do that. In the likely to book journey, show me how long I need to wait before I send a reminder to book. 
Okay, now this is really helpful because I was able to get this very obvious answer here directly from customer journey analytics, all thanks to AI Assistant. And I can see that three to four days is obviously the sweet spot for me to send that email based on this really helpful to read chart. I now can update this journey really quickly and not have to call my data analyst for any help. Amazing. Because we're on such a roll, I want to ask AI Assistant for one more help, one more question to help me out. Using my likely to book journey, generate new email variants for my five newest properties, Kauai, Paris, Barcelona, Palm Springs, and Prague. All right, so I asked for five new email treatments, and Assistant says that we have them. Look at this. Previously, this journey, yeah, it's cool. Previously, this journey just had one email variant, and on the fly, AI Assistant was able to create five corresponding to my five new properties. And if we click into this Kauai focus branch of the journey, we can see this new imagery. It looks beautiful. I'm definitely gonna have to book here sometime after Summit. To steal my 16-month-old's new favorite words, I did it myself. I was able to create this journey and campaign quickly and efficiently to meet my goal without relying on my teammates. Back to you, Anjul. Thank you, Marissa, for that awesome demo of the AI Assistant. Now that you've, we've seen what it can do, I'm going to share a little bit of what's under the hood. AI Assistant is powered by Adobe's generative experience model. This comprises of LLMs for natural language processing, a base model that is trained on our product documentation and best practices, a custom model which has a requisite opt-in that's grounded in your enterprise data profiles, segments, and journeys. And your IP is safe with Adobe. It'll never be shared outside your company. It has a set of decision services for analytical, predictive, and goal-based recommendations, and APIs for programmatic usage across your enterprise workflows and ecosystem. We keep all of this current and updated every 24 hours. So just to summarize, we have built the generative experience model with base models that you can trust, custom models that you control, and AI-assisted applications that you use in your everyday work. So you know, just like you supported us in so many critical initiatives, as experience makers, developers, and partners, we invite you to jointly develop this future of customer experience management with this new way of using the software. Please sign up and get access to this new exciting capability, Adobe Experience Platform AI Assistant. We would love to get your feedback. Um, and with that, I would like to invite Amit Ahuja, our Senior Vice President of Products, to share many more exciting advancements in data and journeys. Thank you, and have an awesome summit. All right. Hello. All right. Thank you, Anjul. Hopefully, everyone's very excited about the AI Assistant. I actually need that to uh, organize my schedule here at Summit, is what I've figured out. Um, hey, I want to build on what Anjul said, what Sean, you said, and Neil said, and quickly get into some couple innovations I'm very, very excited about. The number one theme I just want to highlight to you as I walk through this is we continue to think about expansion, expansion of capabilities so you can do more with the applications that you're using. I want to start first in the world of data. You've heard it earlier today. We've been inv investing heavily into the real-time CDP and this true notion of the single view of the customer. Everybody right now is thinking about how do I retool with first party data at the core? The core message today is we haven't stopped there. There's two innovations I wanna quickly highlight, but most importantly, I'm gonna show them to you. I think the first one is around expanding data access. This is one I wanna take two seconds. We've heard you. Moving data around the enterprise costs money and costs time. We know, and we've heard from you over and over, hey, is there a better way? I don't want to move all this data. I am thrilled to announce today what we're announcing. 
Adobe Experience Platform Federated Audience Composition. What this means, very, very simply, you can leave your enterprise data where it is in any data warehouse, whether yours or third party, and you can query it directly from AEP. This is huge. Thank you. The second area I want to spend just two seconds on, again, before I show you, is around the notion of how we're helping more and more with acquisition. We all know the digital ecosystem continues to evolve with the deprecation of third-party cookies. And we've again heard from you, hey, how do I use my first-party data in a very privacy-friendly way? How do I do that to really find and attract new audiences? And we've already taken steps down this direction, right, with a real-time CDP integrations into these different third-party data providers, but using stable IDs at the core. Again, very excited to announce today, real-time CDP collaboration, truly bringing first-party data, the ability to activate that between advertiser and publisher with privacy at the core. You can now activate and you can measure in a safe way. But again, as I said, it's always better to see it than me just talk about it. Marissa, can we show it to them? Let's do it through the lens of Major League Baseball. Over to you. Thank you, Amit. And I would also like to thank Major League Baseball for allowing us to use their brand for this demo. For me, being a Chicago native means I'm a Cubs fan through and through. But I grew up, moved to San Francisco, and I no longer get to watch my Cubs play at Wrigley. Let me take you through a customer experience that MLB is powering with Adobe applications. Their goal as part of a back to the stadium campaign is to both find and engage people like me, the next generation of fans. So as I'm streaming my weekly lineup on NBC Universal, which, I mean, look at this, who wouldn't want to watch all of these? It goes to commercial. MLB identifies me as an out-of-market fan with an upcoming Cubs at Giants series in San Francisco. Here's an email letting me know that there are still tickets to the upcoming game. And this is an exciting pitching matchup I would not want to miss. Justin Steele is actually my favorite player who I follow in the MLB app. Awesome. But I have to confirm my plans before I book, so I forget to buy. A few days later, I'm, scroll I'm deciding that I'm going to buy a jersey. Sorry, one second, I'm gonna use my other technology here. I am going to buy a jersey, and at this point, it's like they read my mind. I get another push notification, time to buy my tickets, and I'm getting a special jersey plus ticket promotion. Plus, I gotta go to this game. Lucille and Clark look like they're having a great time. So the question is, how do we do this at scale for all MLB fans that live in a different city from their preferred team? We're gonna use a combination of those capabilities that Amit just talked about. Let me just move this over, there we go. Here I am in real-time CDP, and I wanna go ahead and click on audiences to show you that out-of-market Cubs fan segment that I'm a part of. We can see in the definition that I don't have tickets to the game, I, I, uh, my favorite team is not my home team, and, <laughs> sorry, my favorite team is not my home team, and my favorite team equals the Cubs. You might remember, though, that I had that exciting matchup listed in my email of Justin Steele. That data has not been shared to Adobe Experience Platform. MLB keeps the starting lineup data only in a cloud data warehouse. But now, with federated audience composition, MLB can access that data directly without needing to copy it over. We heard you all loud and clear. You wanted flexibility with your data management and minimized data copy, and this is it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how simple this workflow is. Here, in federated audience composition, we can see that this is a really visual, intuitive interface. It wasn't built with coders or developers in mind. This is enterprise ready and allows me to interact with data in many different ways to enhance a fan's experience. Data like stadium foot traffic, jersey sales, starting lineup data. So to do this workflow, you would first wanna set up that secure connection to your cloud data warehouse with all of the right access controls, of course. And then we have my segment of out-of-market fans, which I have combined with the ticketing data. And in this enrichment bucket here, I go ahead and click it, and this is where I would select the specific attribute from the Cloud Data Warehouse that I'm interested in leveraging. From here, I click Start, and that data has automatically been saved back into real-time CDP for me to use. MLB is getting minimized data copy, fans get insight into which aces are facing off. You know where I'm going with this probably. It seems like a home run. Thank you, that's gracious. <laughs> So at this point, we now want to try to find this audience where they're consuming content. 
So because we're looking towards a younger demographic, I'll go ahead and activate this to any number of our downstream destinations that are available to me in real-time CDP, thanks to our helpful source connector and destination connector catalog. I could go ahead and select Facebook, but I also want to try to find these people where they're watching. So connected TV, since it skews towards a younger demographic, is definitely the right place. And to do that, I'm going to use powerful new real-time CDP collaboration technology that Amit just talked about. Here, advertisers can share their data with publishers so they can try to find their audiences where they are on new and emerging digital channels like connected TV and retail media networks, all without relying on third-party cookies. This is an entirely new interface, so let me quickly orient you. Here on the homepage, I can get an overview of all of the active connections and projects that I have open for collaboration with different publishers. Here I could find additional publishers I might want to connect with, I could set up additional collaboration, sharing my audiences with different groups, and I can also connect new data sources. I'm going to go ahead and click into this icon and show you the active connection that MLB has with NBC Universal. Scrolling down to this project that I've already set up for the specific campaign, I'm going to go ahead and click on Audience Insights, and this is where it gets really interesting. Here, I can select a dropdown and pick that out-of-market fans Cubs audience. A 79% overlap is awesome. This means that I will likely find a lot of this audience on NBC Universal properties. A lot of them might also be watching that awesome lineup that I showed you earlier. What's also really cool about this technology is I could leverage additional segments or audiences that the publishers are making available to the advertisers. So in this example, sports fans seems like a really obvious one that we might want to use for this campaign. So to activate, I'll go ahead and click Activate Audience. So now my first party audience segment has been shared with NBC Universal. I'll click Target, and now the sports fans audience owned by NBCU is available for MLB to use. Click View Targeted Audiences, and here we go. We have now made a privacy-minded digital handshake from MLB to the publisher. Amit, back to you. Thank you, Marissa. That is awesome. And thank you, Major League Baseball. A couple more quick things I want to hit on uh, before we move on with the rest of the agenda. Journey Optimizer. So you've heard about it earlier today from Anil. You heard about it earlier from today from Shotnu. This is the application that we've been really revolutionizing, the notion of one-to-one -one true personalized communications. Not only just outbound, but bringing inbound and outbound into the same single surface area. Again, similar to here, we're very excited to talk about two new innovations that I'm excited to announce today. The first one, is around B2B. We've continually been investing in B2B. You've heard us talk about B2B in the context of the CDP. We've continued to invest in Marketo. We are now bringing B2B orchestration directly into AJO. What do we mean by this? Right, very, very simply, where marketing has been focused on leads and sales has been focused on account groups, we can now bring those together. And we can orchestrate that so you're providing the right experience to that B2B customer every single moment. And the point I would make here that I think is really important to understand, this is not just about the top of the funnel. This is about the full funnel for the customer, upsell, cross-sell, everything. That is now part of B2B, and we are del delivering truly an integrated B2B solution. That's the first part. Thank you. The second part, again, we've heard from you on this one as well. The desire to make sure that audience-based journeys are continually married up to consumer-initiated journeys. The thing that everybody hates and we all struggle with is when you're about ready to send out an audience-based message, a, a batch campaign, and all of a sudden you're getting more signal from the cu customer, and that's not reflected in the experience they're getting. That's horrible, and we are fixing that. We now have both brand-initiated and consumer-initiated in the same application with Journey Optimized, the only application that can do that. Very, very excited about that as well. I did want to spend just two seconds on the role of measurement. You've seen it. You saw Nil's announcement around content analytics. This has been an amazing journey that we've been on. If you rewind back the clock, we started with just data. We started around web analytics, being able to track a single web. Then we moved to mobile. And now what you see on the screen is what I'm super proud of. We have deep telemetry measurement insights and analytics across every core pillar with the addition of content today. And I cannot stress how key this is. Measurement is at the heart of personalization. Personalization, knowing what works and be able to iterate and provide that best experience. What does all this mean? 
At the end of this, hopefully you got a key sense of all of our innovation. I think fundamentally believe we're offering a true comprehensive integrated set of applications. And with that, I'm gonna pass it right back to Anil. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Anjil and Marissa. Really appreciate it. Anjil spoke about the AEP AI Assistant, which provides a conversational interface that can answer technical questions, automate tasks, simulate outcomes, and generate audiences and journeys within the experience platform and the three apps that run on the platform. And that's the first key step for us, to deliver an AI Assistant across the entire experience cloud. So think of this for every marketer as a personal, customized control plane with information at your fingertips across all the key activities that you have in flight, and with the ability to take action through a conversational interface. You'll have the latest on all of your content, campaigns and timelines, critical insights integrated in real time across all the Adobe apps that you're using. And we can only begin to imagine the agility and the productivity benefits that are going to follow. And this AI assistant will not only be available through our apps, like the Experience Manager and Workfront, as well as the Experience Platform, but we want to bring it to you everywhere that you are. And for marketers, one of the best ways to do that is through the Microsoft tools that you use every day, like Word or PowerPoint or Excel or Outlook and Teams. And I'm pleased to share that that's exactly what we're announcing today, through a joint project between Microsoft and Adobe, so by connecting our Adobe Experience Cloud workflows and insights to Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365, and we take advantage of both companies' investments in Gen AI, we will enable you to boost your marketing efficiency with easy access to insightful data. You and your teams will be able to create marketing briefs, content, and internal reporting, all based on insights from your marketing and planning data, It'll help you save hours, which is usually spent toggling between multiple tools to get these kinds of insights. And you'll be able to answer top of mind questions ranging from project status or campaign effectiveness all within minutes. Ultimately, we believe that this will empower marketing teams to always stay current and in a way that meets them where they are every day. Really exciting joint innovation with Microsoft. Okay, we've been discussing a lot of topics. Customer experience, personalization at scale, Gen AI. And these are topics that are top of mind for every CEO today. There's no better leader to discuss these topics with us than Mary Barra, Chair and CEO of General Motors, who is leading transformational change in the auto industry. Please join me in welcoming Shantanu back to the stage for a conversation with Mary. People love their cars. It's this deeply personal relationship. Being with yourself, being with friends. It's really incredible what a vehicle unlocks for you. The change we're going through at General Motors is bigger than the change from horse and buggy to cars. You're not just buying the beautiful exterior design or the power. You're buying an incredible consumer electronic that can do incredible things for you. Customers have a two-way conversation with brands, products, and experiences. It is personalized. How is that going to be compelling and contextual for our customers? Anything from convenience and comfort, personalized infotainment offerings, and also better safety and security outcomes. And that comes to life in our four brands, Cadillac, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. We're working with Adobe to really increase the speed of innovation, but it's also to increase the speed of experiences. What used to take weeks to build audience segments, now our marketers can go in and do that within hours or minutes, and then launch experiences at scale. The one I'd love to highlight is a Chevy Trax build your own journey. An individual has shown intent. They've gone to our website. They're learning about Chevy Trax. If they may have abandoned that journey, we're able to send them a real-time notification to re-engage in that campaign. Our ability to bring folks back through relevant contextual marketing activities demonstrated a 10x jump in 
completions of Build Your Own to actually make this tangible and real where they could bring home a Chevy Trax into their driveway. Adobe has been so instrumental in giving us the foundation with the work that we're doing together on the Adobe Experience platform. I'm really excited to think about the applications for generative AI, creating seamless experiences between our customers and the vehicle. Cars are pretty personal experience. It is a place where AI can play a big role because it can help you understand combinations of elements that can deliver the right experience to somebody that a human couldn't do. The vision for the future that we've articulated is the zero, zero, zero vision, zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. All of the engineering that we're doing today for electrification, for software, for autonomy, is all driving towards those goals. To be able to be the wheel continuing to drive that next level of change, this is a dream come true. Hi again. <clears throat> I'm really delighted to have Mary Barra, Chair and CEO of General Motors, joining us today at Adobe Summit. As a 44-year veteran of GM's... <laughs> she's known as a bold and decisive leader, setting an ambitious vision of zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion for GM. She is focused on creating the best customer experience, as well as strengthening GM's core vehicle and service business while working to deliver transformative technologies, such as electrification, autonomous driving, and software. Mary also served previously as the chair of the Business Roundtable and serves on the boards of the Walt Disney Company, Duke University Board of Trustees, and the Detroit Economic Club. Welcome, Mary, and thank you again for joining us at Summit. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, I realized when I was doing a little bit of uh, you know, background that we actually have some stuff in common. Okay. Uh, we both were electrical engineers. Mm -hmm. I left my electrical engineering because I hated it. Uh, <laughs> uh, my first job also was working for an auto company oh. in software uh, where we were doing building stamping plants. Okay. Um, and we both did an MBA while we were working. Mm -hmm. You went to the better school at Stanford. I went to the other school, Cal. But we had a great time. Both uh, good. Both, good. Yeah, both great schools. But you joined General Motors when you were 18, and you worked in almost every aspect of the business. So maybe you can talk a little bit about your journey and what's brought you here. Well, uh, it, it seems like when you look at it, uh, for those of you early in your career, it, it can go by like that. But you know, being at GM for so long and starting as a college co-op student, I actually started on the assembly line. And I was a quality inspector. And so you know, really understanding where it all comes together, because nothing happens to you build and sell a vehicle, uh, and having that kind of ground, grounding of what it takes. And then in the different assignments that I've had, primarily in manufacturing and engineering, but then also had a stop in HR. And uh, I will tell you, HR, I learned so much because if you think about every company, it's all about your people and motivating them, creating the right culture, the right incentives. And so I uh, learned a lot. I would say the best job I had was when I was running product development, you know, spending time either in the design studio, improving grounds, uh, or, or at, with our dealers. So, uh, but now in the, the CEO chair for 10 years. And coming up and knowing how everything comes uh, comes together and how everybody works together is really an advantage because when something's happening, you can kind of go right to the point and say, okay, this is where we've got to focus. So uh, being there that long has been helpful. And how would you say all the background and having worked in so many different areas of the company actually helps you both because you have such a deep understanding of what it takes uh, to innovate, but also just your understanding of the groups. How does that help you motivate the teams? Well, I think uh, a lot of it is working together because unlike a lot of companies the size of General Motors, we really do one thing. We you know, design, engineer, and build vehicles with software and then the associated services. And so it's one business. And so knowing how to connect everyone I think is really, really important because what is a vehicle? It's integrating 30,000 parts uh, and, and you know, putting and with all the software to create a, a, an experience now more than just uh, transportation to go from point A to point B. 
you know, we're a product company and we like to talk about innovation. And over the course of its 115 years, uh, I was reading about all the fundamental transformations that GM has uh, provided, you know, the catalytic converter. But what amazed me was also things like the heart valve, which helped with open heart surgery, what you've done in cardiology, aerospace, refrigeration. How do you keep that spirit of innovation alive over this time? Well, I'd say, you know, when you look at our 115-year history, we, it, as we move now, we, we do have to focus. But I think what we stay focused on is the customer. And one of my favorite stories about innovation at General Motors was Cadillac back in, I think, 1912 or 1908, that time frame. I can't remember the exact year. But they in, invented the electric starter. And you think, okay, we all take that for granted. But if you think about it at that point in time, you started a car with a crank. And for people of small stature, for women, it was hard to crank start. In fact, people would get injured, break arms. In fact, I've been told that's where the word cranky came from. <laughs> and, and so, you know, that's where I, when I look up and think about the spirit of innovation, they took something that the customer disliked and then innovated to solve that issue. And so we try to drive that across the whole company. How do we, how do, we do everything focused that's going to make the customer experience better? And you have talked so much about customer success and how a company really needs to focus. Uh, you've done this flag planting of you know, zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. Maybe a little bit about how you came up with it and what it really means in terms of driving the entire organization and the industry. Sure. Well, you know, if you look at our industry over 100 years ago, we gave people freedom. It changed how people connected. It changed how towns came together, where people chose to live. So, you know, in, in many developing nations, uh, car ownership is, is still, you know, something people aspire to do. So it's a very important uh, part of everyone's life. But with that, over the 100 years, we've, we've had crashes. We've had you know, impacts on the environment with emissions, and then, of course, congestion. And when we look at it now with the technology that's available, we really believe we can get to a world where zero crashes, you know, and the technology we put on cars all the way to autonomous driving uh, will lead to, to safer, safer travel. When you think about moving to uh, all electric, doing the right thing from an environment to make sure that we're, we're not, you know, we're creating a world that our children and our grandchildren are, are going to appreciate. And then finally, if we can reduce congestion with the combination of that technology and then working with municipalities uh, to really improve flow, uh, you know, we can give back everybody that precious commodity called time. So when I look at it from a General Motors perspective, being in the business for 100 years, I feel we have a responsibility to apply that technology in a way to, again, do what's right for the customer. You are driving these generational shifts you know, at GM, uh, certainly from gas engines going to EV. And I know uh, you've talked a lot about going from being just a hardware company to a hardware and software company. And, you know, given this is an audience that also embraces technology, maybe a little bit of, you know, what that means for you to be a software company as well and what role technology plays in these transformational shifts. Well, I would say this transformation is all about technology from the way the vehicle is propelled, but the software and the, the fact that the vehicle really is a software platform is even more significant. Everybody talks about moving from internal combustion engine to EV. What is happening with the vehicle from a software perspective, I believe, is even more uh, important because, what, again, what it can do from an experience of when you're moving from point A to point B. And so, and if you think about the industry, you know, the first um, vehicles were all mechanical. And so making that shift in about five, actually a little bit longer now, uh, eight years ago, we fundamentally reorg reorganized the way that we develop vehicles, re recognizing uh, that it, it was much more of, of an electronic uh, type or, or software uh, foundation that we needed to have and it needed to be integrated across the entire vehicle. I would say then last year with the addition of Michael Abbott who joined, joined our team and reorganized our whole, the whole way we do software to really allow us to build and, and, and have that platform. So it's been one of the most significant. It's all about technology. And as the team that has joined says, it's not about, uh, it's, it's not just about the software, it's about doing beautiful vehicles with the right software that customers are going to love. And so it's that marriage of hardware and software. Well, you do have beautiful vehicles, and you know so much about that is the brand that you're trying to create. This is a, 
a marketing group. So maybe a little bit on how you think about brands, evolution of brands, attracting a next generation of customers. Well, there's a lot of lessons learned in General Motors over our 100 years about managing brands. And I would say probably about 15 years ago, there was a renewed focus on the importance of our brands. Uh, you know, clearly Chevrolet, which is, is value, but represents so much, uh, you know, is, and is associated with, with the United States, with America. Uh, but then Cadillac and rebuilding to have a true luxury brand, as well as the role that GMC and Buick play. So, you know, we really now work hard to manage those brands. They each have distinct identities. And frankly, we see customers, uh, even with trucks, if someone's a Silverado buyer, they usually aren't going to buy a Sierra and vice versa. So understanding what that means is so important. We've had a renewed focus and our, our, our marketing team uh, under uh, Norm DeGrave is really uh, stepping that up. And, and I'm really proud to say we also have the highest customer loyalty. And uh, you know, when someone joins the family of all of all auto companies, and I think that's that speaks to the promise and how we deliver on that with each customer. You know, last year was certainly the year of predictive AI, and everybody talked about AI. Maybe you know, how did you go about thinking about what role AI, whether it's for autonomous driving or you know the development of cars, what it means for GM? Well, well, clearly, um, self-driving vehicles, and although you know we've had some challenges at Cruise, the fundamental technology I still believe in 100% because 90% of, of fatalities in this country, and there's generally 40,000 of them uh, on average a year, are happening um, due to human error. And so if you can eliminate that human error, uh, you can really change, change the driving experience, make it tremendously safer. So if you think about it, that's one of the huge, from a machine learning AI perspective, one of the, the biggest transformations that will happen. But I also think there's ways that we can use AI across many different parts of the business, to, uh, from processes uh, to improving the way we manufacture, improving the way we start up plants, improving the way that we market to our consumers. So uh, we think it's very important and it's something that we review on a regular basis at this, our most senior leadership team and also with our board. You talked about manufacturing and I know the average car has something like 30,000 parts mm -hmm. and so uh, you probably have a much more refined perspective on the global supply chain and what's happening. Maybe touch on that a little bit. Sure, well, I, you know, I think we all learned about supply chain through, through the pandemic, and uh, I would say the auto industry probably has one of the most complex global supply chains of, of almost any industry. And, uh, you know, that resiliency, we saw that. And, and even, you know, about a decade earlier when there was the big tsunami that hit in Japan, we realized that almost the whole industry was using one small, at the time, tier four manufacturer that would help us do certain paint colors. And so we've been we're on a journey and, and I would say accelerated with the learnings of COVID to have more resiliency in our supply chain. I think it's, it's very important when you look at uh, you know, how the world can be disrupted, and frankly, you know, some of the tensions from a geopolitical perspective, having resiliency and understanding at, at a detailed level, not just your initial suppliers or your tier one suppliers, but we go pretty deep into the supply chain uh, with the learnings that we've had. And, and of course, the semiconductor crisis, you know, up until that point, General Motors really didn't buy semiconductors. They were bought through our tier, tier one and tier two suppliers. We've revamped that whole strategy to, to standardize on families of semiconductors uh, and, you know, kind of, I'll say, doing a directed, directed buy so we, we control our own destiny. Maybe a last question, you touched on how as the role of HR, that was one of the most uh, important roles because we are all in the people business. But you know, for people, uh, purpose and culture, you know, how do you drive what purpose means at GM? Well, a couple, um, a couple years ago, uh, we recognized, although we had the vision of zero crashes, zero emissions, zero congestion, we didn't really have a purpose. And it was funny, as we started having that conversation, uh, with one of the new senior leaders that came joined the company, Alan Wexler, who's here, um, it, it became something that I felt like every time I picked up a business journal, they were talking about companies with a purpose uh, to drive better results. And so we went through a, a process of uh, with the senior leadership and people representing the globe as well as our board uh, to develop our, and, and actually looked at our history 
to come up with you know, what we thought the purpose, General Motors' purpose was, and it's to pioneer the innovations that move and connect people to what matters. And as we rolled that out, each word meant something, and it's really resonated in the company, and you know, it connects to everything that we do. So I'm a big believer that purpose-driven companies are going to drive, first of all, your, your employees really understand uh, and can ladder up to, to that purpose and be proud of it. Because you know, when I look at you know, generations that are joining the workforce now or, or newer in the workforce, they're very mission-based, and I love that. I, you know, I, I love when I get that email from somebody who's been at the company you know, three months and you know, they have a new idea or they're asking a question. And so uh, I think it's really important to be a purpose-driven purpose uh, company to get that alignment. And I'm a, I remember a hearing at the Aspen Festival where you talked about how you respond to every one of those emails that you get. So I, again, I, I think that goes a long way because your actions, maybe a little bit on how that purpose extends to the communities that you belong in as well. Well, we also believe, you know, at General Motors, I think we have a rich history of participating with the community and, and frankly, serving the country. If you look back on our history, and even through the pandemic with making ventilators. But we believe that we need to be good stewards and, and be part of making our community, the communities in which we live and work better. So, you know, what every plant has a relationship and is working not only on community actions. And I'm always so impressed with the actions of our employees and the time that they volunteer, as well as the, the resources uh, to help the local community. So it's something I'm very proud of, and it, it's, it's something you know, deep within GM's culture. I'd like to end uh, with a word association, Mary. So I'll just give you a word. Okay. And you know, uh, whatever word comes to mind, maybe you can just respond to that. Okay. Uh, STEM. Critical. American manufacturing. Oh, I can't use the same word, can I? Uh, really important. I know that's two <laughs> words. I mean, we, I think if we learned anything through the pandemic, we need to be able to make things in this country. Detroit. Grit. Uh, electrification. Uh, technology and really life changing uh, from a, vehicles are so much, if you haven't driven an electric vehicle, please go to one of our dealerships and drive an electric vehicle. They are so fun to drive, instant torque, so it's game changing. Technology. Uh, gosh, I'm going to say critical to everything. Uh, <laughs> uh, technology, I mean, it's what drives us. Dogs. Oh, Marcy and Hunter. <laughs> My dogs. <laughs> <laughs> General Motors. Um, iconic. Mary Barra. Down to earth. Well, please uh, <laughs> join me in thanking Mary Barra for being here. She's been unbelievably gracious. She has to fly to the East Coast, but thank you again so thank much. Thank you. Thanks, for everybody. Being with Have me. a great conference. Thank you. Thank you, Mary and Shantanu. Really appreciate it. Incredible, down to earth leadership and innovation. Really inspiring. So much to learn. And we really appreciate all of you being with us. We've covered a ton of ground this morning. Let's quickly recap. Gen AI, critical to the future of the experiences we deliver our customers, and it's what will enable you, as the world's customer experience and marketing leaders, to fuel innovation, speed, efficiency across content, data, journeys, and achieve the promise of personalization at scale. And you have our commitment of innovation along with history and expertise. We want to earn the right to be your trusted partner. So let me close. I want to reinforce that we only touched the surface in our time this morning. Please make time for the strategy keynotes, both today and tomorrow, which start at 1 p.m. this afternoon, where we'll dive deeper into these innovations and strategies today across AI, content, data, journeys, marketing performance, and more. We have an amazing lineup set up for tomorrow as well. So for now, have a wonderful remainder of the day, and look forward to seeing you all back here tomorrow. How do I deal with what I'm feeling? Maybe I just don't. I just don't. What you do when I'm in ruins all alone. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. And I know nothing to do. Helps me forget about you. You just came out of the blue. If you only know. 
Forever loving till eternity I see 